In this video, we are going to learn the law of sines and the law of cosines. Now the great thing about both of these is that they work for any triangle. So it doesn't have to be a right triangle in order for these rules to work. The sine and cosine in these laws are the same sine and cosine that you learned in normal trigonometric ratios, and you can use those buttons on your calculator the same way. So the law of sines works like this. If you have any triangle, whether it's a right triangle or not, and you label the three angles, A, B, and C, and the three sides, where the opposite sides are the same letter as the angle, so this would be side A, side B, and side C, it will always be the case that sine of angle A over side A will be in the same ratio as the sine of angle B over side B, which will also be in the same ratio as the sine of angle C over side C. So the idea is the sine of any angle divided by its opposite side length will equal the sine of any other angle divided by its opposite side length. So you never will really be working with all three at once, but all three do work. So you usually will be working at, with two at a time. So in a situation like this, usually you will have two angles in the triangle and one of the sides and you're solving for another side. So for example, if you had a triangle and you knew one angle was 100 degrees and the side opposite from that was 20 inches long and we knew another angle was 20 degrees and we were trying to figure out the side across from that, x, we can use the law of sines to help us out. What we know is that the sine of 100 degrees divided by 20, because that's an angle and its opposite side, will equal the sine of 20 degrees divided by x, because that's another angle and its opposite side. Then you use your calculator to help you out figuring out the sine of 100 and the sine of 20, and just cross multiply to solve for x. So that's the idea of the law of sines. Next we're going to talk about the law of cosines. So the law of cosines also works for non-right triangles. And again, we're going to set up a situation where we have angle A, B, and C, and sides A, B, and C, such that they match up. So angle A is across from side A, and so on. Now what the law of sine says is that side C squared will equal side A squared plus side B squared. So, so far that should look familiar. It's basically like the Pythagorean theorem. But then we have to minus something. We have to minus 2 times A times B times the cosine of angle C. So it's like the Pythagorean theorem, but because it's not a right triangle, this sort of accounts for that. So an example where you would use the law of cosines is here. What we have is an angle, and we're looking for the side opposite it, and we know the other two sides. To use the law of cosines, you usually need to have one angle and two sides. So in this case, we're going to make x be our c from the equation. 4 is going to be a, 6 is going to be b. So angle C has to be across from side C, so that would be our 50 degree angle. The reason I had to make X be side C is because the only angle in the equation is C, so I had to make the known angle of 50 degrees C. So now you'd plug everything into the formula, and we'd have X squared equals 4 squared plus 6 squared minus 4 times oops, that should be 2, times 4 times 6, and then cosine of 50 degrees. And then at this point, all you have to do is use your calculator to help you out, figure out 4 squared plus 6 squared 
multiply this all out, use the calculator to get cosine of 50, and you'll get some number and square root it to find x. So that's a brief introduction to the law of sines and the law of cosines. The main thing to remember is that they can work for any triangle, whether it's a right triangle or not. And as long as you know the formulas, you're good to go.